Hey guys, I uh, Greg Christensen here, Grandview Livestock. I thought I'd just say a little bit about the guard dogs. Now there's three dogs in this pasture. <clears throat> and I don't know if you can see, there's one up there with the uh, with the goats. It's looking at us now. And he's friendly enough, but you might not be able to just to walk out pet him in the pasture what I was going to want to let you know is, is when you got multiple dogs you'll kind of learn these dogs and and each one of them uh, has a different personality and these two dogs like here they they come up to me check me out I could probably catch either one of those I can pet them um, they just got a different personality. This dog's a little older dog here. Probably, I don't know, he might be six years old even now. I don't remember this other standoffish dogs. He's a younger dog. Um, and sometimes we don't get them socialized as much when they're pups as some other dogs. Um, but sometimes it's just it's just their personality. It's just their style of dog. And you can almost tell it when they're pup. You can tell which ones kind of stand off and won't let you come up and maybe pet them. And, and uh, so I remember this brown dog was a, a pup. And yeah, you could... You know, he was really friendly even then. It, your personality will start showing pretty early in life. Now, you want to get those dogs in with some livestock of what they're going to guard. Oh, gosh. I just have them out there when they're born out there. Um, at least, you know, as soon as you can when they're before they're weaned or at least after they're weaning. Um, you'll want them. And the best thing you could do is keep them with the same herd all the time it's not always possible we switch dogs around sometimes from one herd to another that, that these two dogs these two friendly dogs were not worth with these uh, goats all year we switched them over there we didn't need as many dogs at home we only had one dog where these goats were at we moved them home from and so uh, we took these other two over there just because we didn't need them around home here and uh, uh, you'll find some dogs are real dominant to uh, the dog food feeder and so you may have to we have a patch we have to put two dog feeders there and put them a considerable distance apart so one dog can't keep the other dogs away from the feeder and sometimes dog doesn't like to jump in that feeder if there's another dog he feels like he's in there and he's trapped and the other dog might fight with him uh, so you kind of watch the condition of your dogs and if you see if you know one getting skinny or something he's probably not getting in there and eating dog food uh, so you need to figure that out uh, just handling these dogs is just a whole nother part of the goat business sheep and goat business that you know you gotta you gotta learn it's uh, some people can't do it some people you know, they don't want to have the guardian dogs and they try llamas or donkeys and you know, quite honestly I've never had any luck with them I know some people have um, but the, the dogs seem to be the best fit for what we do with them in the bigger pastures um, where they're off kidding um, and they won't stay with the group or they're hiding their kids somewhere so that's it just seems like dogs are way to go on on those kind of things I don't know exactly how many dogs we have people have asked me I'm gonna say we have between 20 and 25 guardian dogs we've got we we rarely have a dog by itself somewhere um, we'll have two to three to four dogs in a pasture together depending on the size of the pasture the size of the herd that's with it oh how how many predators might be in the area and how long we've had goats there it seems like the longer you have goats someplace uh, you kind of beat the predators back the guard dogs sort of take control of the situation but it 
it gets better after a few years you'll still get some predators uh coming in i'm i'm sure we probably lose some i don't know i don't know what happens out here at night It'd be interesting to know so if you don't get along with dogs or you're intimidated by the guard dogs um, you're gonna have to get over that or learn learn how to handle them or um, or maybe pick a different profession as uh, this place would fall apart if it wasn't for the the guard dogs and the herding dogs um, yeah we rely on them hey guys uh, a couple of you want to know how we feed our dogs and so I figure if a couple of people have a question uh, maybe more of you do um, and I think I've done a video on this before, but it's probably last year about this time and some of you don't go back and look at all of them, but this is how you can feed your dogs. Uh, we put this self feeder out there and uh, fill it up. It'll hold 50 pounds anyway. Now you want to raise it up off the ground, try to hang it up on your cattle panel there or something. Um, keep their bottom from rusting out of it. This one's already, it's got the bottom rusted out of it. Uh, that was before we thought about hanging them up, I guess. And yeah, they would rust out, you know, every, it'd take a year or two. I mean, we got some or been around for a while. And so you want to take uh, some cattle panels here and build a cage that the dogs can go in and eat. Uh, I just stepped this cage off. It's just some panels we had around um it's about eight foot and then on two sides and then uh looks like two sides were a little shorter maybe we just had a, a five or a six foot panel there just a piece of one we had now uh you want to cut a hole in the front where the dog can jump in and out see here he comes he can come in and out pretty easy now that hole wasn't originally that big um, it's, it's just kind of got wallered out over the years. It's a piece of, of uh, wafer board, it looks like. And so uh, it started out about 18 inches by 12 inches, kind of an oval. Looks like a football, maybe. I'll see if I can find one, to, picture one that's not all wallered out there. So the dogs can jump in there, and the goats could jump in. This hole is so big, um, you'll get a goat figured out once in a while, but we haven't had any trouble up here. And then you'll want to, if I can get a good shot of this, we put some little welded wire and some chicken wire or something around that because what will happen, goat will come up here and they'll stick their head in there they get their head caught in that cattle panel. Well, we only go around about once a week. Check the dog food feeders, check the fence, check the livestock. So you've got somebody with their head stuck in there that long and they're not gonna you know, live that long, especially when it's hot in the summertime. So uh, most of them we've, we've put some welded wire um, you could you'd get a smaller squares of a cattle panel. They're more expensive, but if you got to add the wire, if you don't have some other kind of wire, if you're buying panels, um, that might be a good idea. But you need something there so they won't stick their head in there and get their head caught. And they'll reach in there and even just eat some of the weeds or something that's in the, the bottom of that because it's uh, growed up inside there hadn't been grazed so sometimes you'll find that can happen but I like to put a board up here where they jump in and out they don't get their feet caught the dogs don't get their feet caught between the uh, squares on the cattle panels there okay
Yeah, well, it's a nice evening here at uh, Grandview Livestock. Glad y'all tuned in, and uh, it's always a pleasure to. I don't know, you're talking to nobody, but I, I'm talking to everybody. So uh, it's a little awkward sometimes. But uh, hey, if you like this, uh, you know, hit subscribe there. You know what to do. Uh, I think I was up to 500 subscribers. I'm kind of amazed at that. So. Hey, y'all have a good evening.